Good morning and welcome to the Media Speaks live Sunday morning news show. I'm D Lake for Prez. Have a very special guest with me this morning from What's Up in the Sky, Will Farrar. Will, how's it going? Woohoo! Going good, buddy. D Lake, how you been? I've been great here. Let's give a let's give you a round of, round of applause there. Will Farrar, our man. Now, Will, you and I met uh, a long time ago online, discussing politics and such. Yeah, we, back I, in the 2012 race, right? Yeah, back when we were all Ron Pauled out, going full force for Ron Paul and trying to get him elected and trying to see what, trying to act. I think that was the first taste that I got of how corrupt everything actually really is in the American system and. Had uh, that was even I think we were even friends through that because I I had gone to Ron Paul Fest and the first right. day of the the I had RNC tickets that year because the uh, one of the guys I know was the Delaware chairman and it was just a it was sad what happened to Ron Paul and the thing they changed the rules against him so we came up talking at a time where also you were doing I think with Alex Jones when you were looking to do the reporter right, contest yeah, I, was, I was involved uh, with Infowars through the reporter contest in a way and you know we talked back then but uh, so g given our past history of talking politics I thought we could just discuss what's going on tomorrow night we have uh, the big the big night the big first presidential debate Hillary Clinton Donald Trump on the same stage um, yeah. What, what What do you think is going to happen? I mean, what What are you looking forward to, and and what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I'm looking forward to, for this whole thing to be over. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm so tired of the uh, of, of the back and forth of it. It's gotten to be so monotonous. Um, who knows where it's going to go down? I think they're saying that Hillary's been kind of hiding out, looking to. Uh, to practice against the two different Donalds and Donald still seems to be out there running around. I don't know where this man gets his energy from at, at his age, but mm -hmm. when you put those two together, unless she's got a, uh, you know, a real good air about her, she's looking pretty rough. Like she might, like I said, I know the rumors going around that she's sick, you know, and when you look into it, she's got a lot of different ailments from what I've heard. Right. Um, yeah. Um, I think, she does, and uh, I know people are going to be on the lookout for that. I think she'll manage, you know, 90 minutes of standing up uh, at the podium there. She'll answer the questions, but, you know, there will be people that see certain things maybe in her eye movements or little tells that there could be something going wrong there. Um, yeah, it's safe to, it's safe but unless she has a full-on. Will, yeah, you've been my grandfather started getting questions. So yeah. when he got Parkinson's, like, I, honestly, what I see in her, like her eye movement and stuff like that, there's some of the videos where she had done kind of a little, little shake in or just kind of mm -hmm. that, like she almost got chill or something like that. I, I noticed that all the time with my grandfather as that was coming up. So, I mean, like I said, hopefully she, she won't be ill. Um, I think it's going to be a great debate no matter what. Uh, I, I've been really – my. And, you know, I'm a libertarian, so I'd, I'd love to see Gary Johnson on that stage as well, just so America could get another a view of another party. You know, the, I think that kind of brings the best of both parties together, uh, which maybe that's where, he, where Ron Paul probably should have ran around last time and maybe gotten 15 percent. But he uh, and also and also also just 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 uh, on that flashback there, Gary Johnson started out on the same stage as Ron Paul on the Republican stage. Then he bounced to go libertarian. And when Ron Paul was at the height of his like uh, crowds and uh, you know momentum, if he would have switched right then to libertarian right before he conceded to Mitt Romney, I mean, that, that he could have easily made it into the debates as a yeah, libertarian candidate, which he had previously done. So it's not like a major flip-flop. No, not at all. And I think he'd even had time to go ahead and, and register with the party because the, the most people don't even realize that the libertarians have their own convention, you know, just like the Republicans and just like the Green Party. And just they're just mm -hmm. they've built up that two pillar, uh, what do we call it, the, the two pillar uh, um, the de democracy. Duopoly. Yeah, the democracy yeah. that's not <laughs> so you, you right. either pick left or right. Pepsi Coke, you know, either way. They, they just they just released uh, yesterday at my uh, local Seven Eleven the new uh, 
2016 presidential election cup. So you have a red cup for Republican and a blue cup for Democrat. And uh, I pointed out on my Facebook last night that I did a report back in 2012 where I was going nuts because they had a red cup and a blue cup. But back then it said Romney and Obama, the cups said the names. This year they don't put the names on there, just Republican or Democrat. That's it. I guess they're getting away from trying to actually keep uh, <laughs> keep the names on there. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? We'll actually be on the ticket. Except if, if Hillary falls out or something were to go down, a lot of people think that Mr. Kane would automatically become the nomination. That's just not true. From the research I've done, it'll go back to the DNC for a vote. Back to I think the DNC, about, right? Yeah, and not the convention either. Just to the big wigs. I think the 134, 135 people that would be able to choose the nominee. It's a uh, not a, and it would be very interesting. And, and I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about both of them. Donald Trump to me seems like a uh, legitimate guy. He's he talks off the cuff and he ends up sticking his foot in his mouth a lot, which is interesting. You know, at least at least if he wins at this point, we'll have an interesting four years. I really don't think the problem is going to get solved no matter what. The problems of America are here to stay. They're uh, they're being ramped up every day it, it's as watching this over the last what probably two months i started getting worried i was like you know it, it could be to the point where we have something like martial law come into our country look look how fast they can lock down the hell what happened after the boston bombings they were going in people's homes they locked down that whole neighborhood and boy did they sweep that quick i mean they were had no evidence yelling at people there's videos of yeah. people in their house scared crapless you know scared to shit they're screaming hollering running through their house you know this guy so i think we're at that point where you know i remember that- the pictures too of like someone's taking a picture out of their second story window and there's a giant uh like tank truck with a you know like a gunman and the turret on top of the truck yeah. like pointing his pointing his automatic weapon like up at the civilian window yeah. I, I distinctly remember that image. Yeah, like we're in Iraq or something. Like we're in some foreign zone where, where people are – It's everybody I've talked to that's trained for the military lately has been training for these type of you know urban exercises, they call them. I know you guys have really covered a lot of them. Um, I, I looked through some of your YouTube videos. I'm sure you guys have done the uh, – uh, the ones down there in text, the big ones down there in text. I forget what they're called right now, but it's it's a oh, very right, yeah, the operations and different, uh, yeah. yeah, where they work yeah, with all the local, stories. the law yeah. enforcement. I mean, it's crazy. Different operations. I live. Yeah, why in can't a, you do that? On your, why do you have to do that in civilian streets and neighborhoods? And, and well, just do it on your base. You have these yeah, giant yeah. bases. Yeah, and they've got kids. Like they've got. I mean, well, I know that, well, they built cities just to blow them up with nuclear bombs out in the Midwest, you know, in the earlier years. Why can't you just build a couple little cities out there? And I'm sure they do do a lot of their training like that. But when it actually comes in and they're working with the local law enforcement, it's insane. We have, uh, you know, down at the barracks here, our Maryland State Police barracks and, and even the locals, back around the side of the prisons and stuff, there's Humvees. You know, there's stuff that looks like it belonged on the streets, you know, looking for IEDs yeah. in Iraq. It, they're, uh, and I, uh, and it's getting Military. ramped up. Yeah, and it's getting ramped up so much more. Like I was getting at earlier with the, uh, about two months ago, I started noticing. I'm like, you know what? I was talking to my mother. I said, this is how they roll out martial law. These people, they bait people into getting fights. They uh, they really are baiting. The, the news really baits the the. The like Black Lives Matter movement, uh, which I think all lives matter. I mean, I'm, if you know me forever, I don't have a racist bone in my body. Um, I, I like to see. <laughs> I, I like to see everybody matter. You know, I I've been working very hard. So I'm middle class. I should be considered middle class for what I make. And uh, we learned after my father passed away two years ago, and my mother had to go on his social security that hey. I don't know what she would have done without me, you know. And now I'm paying $500 a month for insurance. Even with her Medicaid, or not Medicaid, Medicare, she still pays upwards of $300 with the secondary. So we're talking $800 just for health care. 
and people can't afford that. But then you have people that don't work and they feel entitled. They get free Medicaid. They can go down to the hospital. They can go to doctors. They can get rides to doctors. You know, it's like this haves and haves nots, and uh, and it's beginning to be. It's it's almost like exactly what they wanted to set up, to where you've got not only the the people at the top are no longer being looked at. The fights are in coming in between you know the middle class and the lower class um in which everybody in this country should not there should be no ghettos there should be no for what we spend on war we put our everybody should have a nice place to live i mean i don't believe in socialism but hell look at the look how many empty houses there are versus homeless people there's got to be a way to find people jobs you know and it, it's like a cloward and piven model to eliminate the middle class maybe something like that yeah, very well could be it seems like it's coming well that way be. at least but um i, I looks like, like we are uh i could interrupt you will it looks like we're joined by Anne marie Anne, are you there uh -oh. hey hey, will. hey hey how you doing we're good, sitting here talking, uh, good we're talking politics here for the opening uh <laughs> to delay yeah we were, we were kind of we were kind of stalling for uh you or sam to get in here uh we were talking some politics so i was asking will about his uh thoughts of this year's election and we were kind of flashing back to when we first met back in 2012 and some of the parallels between that race and this year's race uh other things that we find interesting now that you're here though will do you want to uh take the floor and give emory an opportunity to, and, and myself to to hear what you brought for us today yeah, what I what I the reason I'm actually here, not just to talk politics, is I run a website called What's Up in the Sky dot com, and uh, the YouTube channels, you, you know, YouTube dot com forward slash What's Up in the Sky thirty seven, and I think I, I even I think I downloaded and re-upped your last video we had done, um, and if you pull up, you can actually pull that up. Let's see, <laughs> good old good old Drudge Report, right? Still can't be yeah. best quality. One more over. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> um, Excuse me. There you, there you go. You actually got the – what I've done was I did, I'm on the show with Richard C. Hoagland a lot, Other Side of Midnight. And over the, the time that I've gone on there, basically what we do is we look for – any type of anomalies that are out there in space. That's been my hobby since I was a young child. Uh, space was in general, just fascinated with it, absolutely fascinated with it. Um, and as like unsolved mysteries, I don't know if I'm dating myself, I'm 35 years old, but with uh, I think it was Robert Stack and his voice and everything, he'd talk about yeah. like alien invasions and stuff and okay. used to scare yeah. them. You remember, he used to scare the heck out of me, yeah. but it, it also intrigued the heck out of me. So I'd be, uh, I'd be coming along, and what I did was I put together eight pictures that show what seemed to be signs of prior life on Mars. Now, I'm not saying that there's life there still. A lot of people in our groups, a member of a group called UFA, which is the United Family of Anomaly Hunters, there's about 15 groups of us now that have different websites, different um, channels, and we all kind of we're, we're not on all on the same page. We all believe a little bit different, but we offer a place where people can kind of find everything together. And, um, mm -hmm. As you're scrolling, as you're scrolling down through what, there. What, what's on Soul 309 or SOL? How, how do you say that? Soul or yeah, SOL? Saw, yeah, Soul. Basically, what for your, anybody who doesn't know what that is, that's the Martian day of a certain mission. So when Curiosity, which really Mars has almost the exact same day is us it's almost 24 hours i think it's give or take a couple seconds or a couple minutes okay. so they're pretty much on a 24-hour day which is very rare you know that's it's pretty remarkable um this little piece right here came out the rover got there on uh i forget the actual dates but so salt 309 means the 309th day that it was there which were gotcha. corresponding and all these links to these pictures are on my page. If you go to What's Up in the Sky later, if you want to look through them, I'll leave your link up at the top there for a couple of days. And this this article is under there as well. It's just called Best of, uh, you know, Best HD Quality Ones. They, yeah. The, so I think that thing looks – that's the size of a basic CD, man, something like a CD size. So sure that looks like a right. CD, right? Because – I don't know because, I mean, it's – why? Why is it sh so shiny compared to the rest of its uh, surrounding environment? 
Yeah, that's what got me. It seems like we call it Uncle Jake's Junkyard up there uh, because no matter where the rover goes, and it'd be like kind of – sometimes I think about like driving a mile down the road, right, and how much I would see. What happens if, say, this, this place was wiped out and washed away? Well, I don't live where there's many stone or much – you know, the buildings are uh, – you know, uh, aluminum and stuff like that. So a lot of this stuff, I think, out here mm. was destroyed probably hundreds of thousands of years ago. We're talking, maybe even less. You, you know, every we have competing theories on that that type of stuff. Um, but where we go, it's like you can the rover can't turn around without finding something that looks like it was you know carved or had a purpose at some time. That was and, my uh, initial thought just on this one. I mean, just. I mean, I know, I know that elements can can do this, but I mean, just look at the horizontal lines there. And Amory, how how are you feeling about these pictures? Oh, well, I mean, do you I do you look at these and look for things like that, or? Right. Well, like some things like are you know in nature, like nature can't do these like ninety degree angles, like usually Will says, right? Like on your website, and I know that. Um, when I started watching Mars Anomalies channel, um, like he was seeing, like it, it almost reminds me of like of a 3D picture. Do you remember those where you have to stare at them for a while and then you see things come out at you? And yeah. I know like on like Mars Anomalies, at first when I saw these pictures, I couldn't see what they see until like they broke it down. Like when Will breaks it down and when Chris on Mars Anomalies, like he showed like cars or maybe a highway in rocks. Like to me, it looked like a rock at first, but then he showed like the outline of it and went in close up. Like on my computer back then, I couldn't get in close to these things. And then, you know, somebody else makes like a gigapan, like Neville, I think does like gigapans. So then they piece together all these pictures onto one major thing. and it. Some, I mean, some of these things, I know, like like some other websites, they say, oh, I see a face. And then other people are saying, that's that para... Per they, what, per things, because I can't say that word. So it's like, you know, maybe sometimes I'm seeing things that aren't there, and it is just a rock. But other times, what is that? Like, that thing does look like a CD. I mean, what is that? Nature doesn't really make something that looks like that. So that's it is interesting. <laughs> It's definitely a different type of uh, a different type of material than the surroundings, and what I like to do is I, I try and stay away from the faces now, just because it's so easy to see faces. I think our our brains that were tied in to see faces, maybe not even for just the 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 defense mechanism alone, is to you know to see where when things are coming at you, you know, as we. That's evolve. why insects have those like. That's why, like, insects have, like, skull-type faces and stuff on them to confuse other insects. Right. I mean, I, humans, we see we, – we tend to see human faces and other threats. I mean, if you're in a dark alley and you see something that looks like a face, right, Will? You think threat. <laughs> you know, yeah, you think, yeah. what the – who was that? Well, well, this well, well, yeah, what's going on over here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you automatically see it. And you can do that with, with faces easily. And if it looks like a bat, like a giant bat, I mean – that that's pretty crazy too, right? Like a giant, like a Batman kind of thing in a dark alley. Yeah, right. You can okay. do that. So here's but, what here's what but, I do. Here's here's how I decipher what I do videos on. I try and find stuff that has more than one thing in one area, just so the you can have coincidences do exist out there. A lot of people say there's no coincidences, but you could, you know, like on this one, you have this down around where that CD looking thing is, whatever it is, the real bright material, you have this other piece, you know, if you go straight up towards the top, yeah, that if you basically took that rock and, you know, cut it in half and flipped it over, it would be perfectly symmetrical from what it looks like. And uh, so I look for symmetry, I look for geometry, um, I mean, geometry, geometry, geometry. We're looking for things, because that's basically, you know, form before function, that's how it works. You know, that's how we build that the more that I see up here, the more familiar it looks to me. Um, especially if you can you go ahead and s switch over that one right there. It looks like it came off the corner of a building. And who knows how far that's buried down or if it was part of a, uh, 
you know, see if you down there at the bottom, you've got more pieces. And these are cropped out pictures. Um, each one of these are linked on the website. So if people want to actually go take a really good look at this, I recommend going to the website. Uh, you don't even have to check the videos out if you don't want to. There's plenty of pictures enough to where that thing looks like it's got rebar sticking out of the end there. Or, you know, if you're up at the top left-hand corner of it, there's a rounded off spot. So I look for things that, and I, and I go in with it to it with, you know, I'm not looking to find you know, little aliens or little guys on there. I don't think they exist. A lot of people in the groups seem to say, leave this one up for a second too, this one's pretty cool. Um, they try and say, hey, um, you know, that looks like a little guy sitting on the end there. That looks like a thing. And I've got some videos like where it's like rabbit on Mars, the rat on Mars, things that look like it. But I think they're most likely rocks. And what you're looking at here, to me, looks like the foundation of something some sort of building at one time was there and we got to put your put the people watching this in perspective that what happened on mars was so devastating that it wiped out the whole top of mars the ocean was gone it flooded all of the lowlands so all this right here in gale crater at one time was flooded so whatever was on top of that what i what looks like a foundation to me has either been strewn about is is could be miles away depending on how you know the current was you know if you throw a bunch of rocks inside of a uh, uh, water or you put them in your pool you can easily move them around so this stuff could have just picked up and what you have left is a square foundation actually it looks like a good view too and if you look at the top left of that picture if you can zoom in right under the salt to and down just a tad click right over yeah right here there's a retainer wall, it looks like, that runs right around there. There's actually blocking. It's a little bit lower resolution on this one, um, but if the people go check out the pictures, you'll see in high res that uh, some of the blocks still look to be there. It looks like somebody's backyard. <laughs> I mean, I, I take that view. Got the view of the mountain. So it, it's kind of, it's really objective. In the beginning of my videos, I always say, I see what I see, you see what you see, mm -hmm. um, because that's how it's going to be. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, and I noticed that you also have it in chronological order of the the Saul date. Yeah, 109, 309, 508. So this is a progression of the rover moving around. And can we talk about this one? Whoa. Yeah, that, that one looks to me – this was – this was hidden on a cam. This was actually on a Bali cam shot. There's there's like five different cameras. Um, the mass cam takes most of the color pictures you see. This is a very scientific camera that is usually on a rover arm and is used to put you know get really close to a rock and take a really up close image. But sometimes they have it because out on where you can, it's tucked in, but they still take a picture of it. And this happened to catch this. It's it needs to be turned just a little bit to the right. I did I didn't mess with it because I didn't want to. I wanted to show people, but it looks like an entrance into there, coming straight out of there. And at the bottom of it, as you come out, you can see there, there's a white disc down here. And a lot of people picked out right before that white disc. It looks like there's a bevels in it. It almost even looks like. Um, a container, top to a container, and right above it, people keep saying that's a skull. Like I said, I try not to get into the face things. I look for, for out-of-place objects, but this thing has curves in it, all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I can see like a – I mean, when I first opened it, it's like, oh, yeah, it's a giant bison face or something, and I see an eye and something here and maybe a mouth, and that's a face. It's not a face. It's a, it's a rock face. Yeah. But – um, well, what you said about here, like what the way that this sand like comes out right there and it's all like really dark, it looks like a cave entrance or something. You might be right. I don't know. But like, uh, my, my question for you, Will, is the, a lot of these pictures seem so bright and especially the CD or we ca we're calling it a CD, but you know, this object here that appears, you know, brighter than its surroundings. What is the... What is the sun like on Mars? How does it affect it? I mean, is there daytime and nighttime on Mars? Are these just – these are uh, Mars days where the sun causes reflections and re refractions of light like this or something, Will? What, what's the sun like on Mars? Uh, it's exactly like it is here on Earth. Um, 
their rotation is, like I said, it's a 24-hour day. And where they're situated, uh, if you look, the solar system is like a big big plate or a big circle where you got most of the stuff is going around the sun on a, on a flat plane. Um, so there so is – yeah, so there's so, so there's an orbit there that comes through, and every day, come noon, high noon would be you know coming straight down at it. It's uh -huh. kind of just like here on Earth, um, right? Which and that creates all that creates a lot of shadows. Oh yeah, but I mean you can see in the background there, it looks like sort of Earth earthen like. I mean you can see a mountain range, like you would see. Yep. On Earth. Yep. The only thing we're lacking is vegetation. Um, which we have seen some sort of, some sort of like, like cactus type things people have pointed out. I've pointed out what looks like at least uh, you know lichen that's on some of the rock faces and things like that that have grown over the years. Uh, but whatever hit it, these, those two are some of my favorites right here. This this one you're looking at saw 1065. To me, this just screams artificiality. It looks like it was basically destroyed structures. You've got that piece right there that's got a cut in the middle. It's got uh, various uh, in inlays into it where at the top of it, there actually looks like you could take a ruler and mark off where they – yeah, those right there. Um, but around it is where – like if it was just that one, I'd say, okay, well, that, that just could be a coincidence. But if you look at the around it, you see more and more blocks that are just sticking straight out. It almost looks like something had been destroyed, which basically, like I said, Mars took a hammering. Whatever hit it, whether it was uh, Martians that did it to themselves or what is it, a, a extraterrestrial body came around. Um, what's kind of funny is we're finding that the ruins now on, that we're finding as we go up the mountain are uh, a lot – they seem a lot more pristine because they didn't get all the muck and stuff down at the bottom. They didn't get caught up with all the silk. So a lot more, but you still get this butterscotch color to it. All the ones you're seeing on this page, I've actually taken that NASA filter off of it. When you get this from NASA, it looks like it's got like a butterscotch color to it. It only takes one click in Photoshop. You hit auto color and it goes through and picks out the real colors and gives you that color um, but if but you, look, you get it originally from nasa what, what does it look like it's butterscotch or yeah go ahead and go back if you could go to the best quality actually you know what let me see if i can uh yeah go go down to the bottom oh just pull up any of those nasa raw files here we go click where it says nasa raw file right there That's how they come. So oh, okay. They, I see what they, you're they put this butterscotch color over it, and from what everybody's what, told, what do you mean they put? Well, what do you mean they put it on? Don't you mean that's the way it comes, and you're the one that changes it? Yeah. Well, we're, the people who have been studying Mars believe it has a blue has a blue uh, has like a blue blue sky. So, uh, it, it, so what they do is they put this filter on it, and each rover has looked a little bit different. And this goes back to the first time when uh, Viking brought back the first pictures from the land. This was, gosh, back, I think, in the 70s when it was. It brought back the pictures from Mars for the first time. Well, the first one came down, and it had blue skies. Well, after the TV break, they came back in, and the second picture had this color all over it. So it's like they add a filter, and I think it gets done at the rover. Um, it's it's a computer, basically two computers driving around on another planet uh, with a lot of cool tools. But this is how it could be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're America. We have that technology. Thank you. Yes, yes, and we work very hard. And a lot of people are nipping at the at the heels of it too. India's got a kind of space program. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so I mean, a lot you're, of your your picture though isn't <laughs> that much different. You just sort of cool it off, or it, it's almost you you just do a quick auto color, one click in Photoshop, right? One click, it, it finds all the original colors and brings it back. Um, it doesn't take much. It's just you know, edit, auto color. <laughs> how, does photo, how does Photoshop know what Mars really looks like? Will come on, Amory, it, how do you feel about it? It it doesn't. 
it's basically if you take any picture, say go outside and take a picture. I, know, like, I work in yeah, I can, right at dusk. Uh, yeah, right at dusk, it hit auto color, and it'll bring you back towards the daytime colors. And your greens will come out. Your blues will come out. Yeah. Right, good, Ann. And how do you feel about all this? I know you're excited to yeah. have Will on the show, and you had a lot for him. So it's now's now's the time. Yeah, I'll be quiet. I'll oh, answer yeah. your questions. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I think it's cool. Like, and also, Will, I remember he showed on What's Up in the Sky dot com, like, a video of, like, water running. And then, like, a few months later, like, NASA actually made that announcement that there is water, like, on Mars. But I remember first seeing that, and it looked like wet sand, like, from your video. And I thought that was way cool because, you know, and then a little bit later, NASA did come out and admit that there is water there. I've been screaming for the longest time to test these. I've got a couple, there's videos on my website if people search on there, Water on Mars. And I sat, I basically would send an email to NASA, to JPL, um, to Mar Marlin, to people actually who do the photograph. And finally, after Richard's, I went on Richard C. Hoagland's show and I laid out all the pictures, 20 of them, 20 of these drips that we have. They need to be tested. Not once did they scoop it or anything just to see what the water content was. But when they first got there, they took this, there he's got it up there, this really dry sample they took. And it had 0.02% um, water, which to them, they thought, oh, this is a huge thing. Every meter will be able to get, you know, almost a liter or something. However, they put it out. But I'm like, well, why aren't they testing these flows? Um, and finally, at the day after Hoagland's show, they actually shot the ChemCam laser. This, uh, a lot of people don't realize that the, the rover's got a laser that can tell what minerals are, what type of, uh, you know, it comes back with mineral. You can't get the exact content of certain, uh, you know, silicas and, and various pieces like that, but you could tell wetness. You know, you can actually see that it's wet. And he had it. Can you switch back to that D Lake to where we could show show those actual flows? Because this is one of the things I was actually proud of. We actually got NASA to come out and say that they're going to, you know, check these out next time their rover can get to them. Um, well, we'll see if they actually do. They did shoot the laser at it. We can't admit that. Um, I just clicked on that on mine. Did it come up on everybody's when I clicked that, or does it just come up on mine, like down at the bottom? Uh, are you trying to screen share, Will? No, I, I was just kind of looking. I'm just clicking through in your feed and my feed, and it comes up. I haven't used Google Hangouts before. Um, I wanted to show everybody those water drips that you've got on your screen. Can you see it on your screen, Henry? Or do you just see me? Oh, there. Now I see it. Oh, I saw it for a split second. Oh, do whatever you did. Just, just There. Now I see it. I see it now. Yeah, these were everywhere, and you couldn't miss them. I don't see – I mean, JPL, the, the, the people driving the rover could not miss these. So now, at first they came out with the thing, said, well, we can't test it because we don't want to contaminate any soil or anything up there, any water source. Well, if you just were to take a little scoop at the bottom of it, you're not going to contaminate the source. It's obviously running downhill. Um, so they came out and said they are going to, if they get the chance, they will sample it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I, that was a win for me, at least, I thought. Um, yeah, why aren't you working there now? <laughs> I, love, I love my job. Yeah. <laughs> I, would not, uh, I think sometimes, you know, if I would have worked in it, I wouldn't have as much fun doing stuff like this. Turn, the hobbies kind of turned into a, uh, to more of a, you know, it's amazing. But, but when you have a when you have a win like I, I know one of these is the one that we we were talking about uh, a while ago. I mean th this happened. Uh, what when is this from? I don't know. But even more recently, actually, I, you know what it was? It was like the uh, the Nazi helmet. What, wasn't that one of your first yeah. big breaks, Will? The Nazi yeah. helmet on Mars. Yeah, they they <laughs> they, they, they Nazi helmet on Mars. <laughs> I put World War One or World War One style helmet up, and all of a sudden it's Nazi helmet on bars going viral around the internet. So now, the yeah. first thing I ever went out put out, you know, they say Nazi helmet. Never ever did I put it in there. 
uh, Dotsy, but apparently Dotsy is a word that gets a lot of hits. So yeah, and <laughs> and, apparently they tied you to Nazism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, the second one that really went viral was the coffin on bars. It looked oh, yeah, it, coffin. Yeah, that hit so good. That hit the sites here. Everything from Fox News on down. I mean, it's amazing how many how many of my videos have been featured on other websites uh, just in this small, short little period of time. Real and I mean, and, and was that around the time? Like when when did when and how Amory did you uh, come across Will Ferrar? And then I was like, oh, I know that guy. You're on mute, Ann. Oh, oh, I've been. Oh, oh, wait a second. Sorry. Um, I've been watching Will for a while now, like a long time. Um, and you know, there's a lot of websites on, on you, and there's a lot of YouTube videos that actually, like, I don't trust. Like, I totally trust Will. I trust like Mars Anomaly. Um, I used to watch like Olympus Sky, but he hasn't made videos in a while. But like. You know, there's a lot of people out there that will put on their own, like, CGIs and aren't trustworthy. And now I'm starting to watch, like, other websites like UFO Proof where he debunks, like, some of these, like, UFO videos and things. And I really, I still trust Will. Like, when he puts out a picture and he zooms in on it, he even says, go back to the original. And he'll give a link to the original photo. And you can yourself zoom in and see what he sees. He's just pointing it out, uh, you know, So because it's there's so many pictures. It's overwhelming. And I really like Will's site, like, still. I'm still, like, on Will's site. I'm still watching the videos. And they're trustworthy. And the rest of his team, I'm watching, like, I'm introduced to, like, some people I haven't watched before. And I like the whole team, the UFA team. Because they're trustworthy. There's a lot of videos where people just want, they actually make money off of putting out videos on YouTube. Clickbait. And Will is Clickbait. not that. Yeah, Will is not that. Like he said, he doesn't label these things like, you know, Nazi helmet. You know, like he's showing rocks and he's showing 90 degree angles or etchings in the stone. And you actually have to zoom in on these things and, and have somebody point them out because everything looks like a big hill with, with lots of rocks. And I like that he actually let you, he links to the original photo too, and he says you can go into the <laughs> Will, you got a big fan there in Anne Marie. How do you feel about it? How do you feel about some of the, how do you feel about some of the other names that she, she mentioned? Are those, uh, they're, they're all friends. You're, you're fan? Yeah, they're all, all friends. friends. Yeah, Chris, especially from Mars Anomalies. Um, I, we just did, uh, I was able to bring, I've been do, going on the Richard Hoagland's, I've been on his imaging team, which he was one of the, you know, four founders of the Anomaly game or whatever you want to call it, figuring, you know, he found the face on Mars, which they tried to debunk later by saying it's not a face, but it, it absolutely sits right in the middle of a Egyptian style Sidonia, where it looks just like, you know, like Egypt's laid out. We have there's five-sided pyramids there. There's all sorts of stuff, but uh, I, I there's there were people that I stay away. I don't even name them. I stay away from Paranormal Crucible. Their videos they paint fake stuff on. Um, Scott Waring, his UFO Daily Studies website, he's put up a lot of my stuff, and I've got a lot of viral hits because of him. But he always misquotes me. I know or he'll always, you know, put something a little bit crazy in there that gets translated into whatever article it picks up. So, and even Tyler at Secure Team 10 or Secure, whatever it is now, he's kind of sold out to the UFO videos. It's real hard to, to, that's the reason why I got that. In 2011 or 2012, I really picked up. I said, I'm tired of going to these websites and finding no link, just a cool picture that has like a pyramid or something on Mars. And then I'd be searching for days for the, for the actual, I want to see it myself. So I said, I'm going to go over every anomaly that I can find out there on the web. For, so for the first year, I did mostly known anomalies and gave people links to it, showed the people. And then I started getting so out that's my when you were That's when you were studying more uh, down to earth type stuff like Atlantis or other, uh, yeah. Like geo map type uh, stuff. I remember that. Yeah, that was all that I got into that too. I like that. I like those findings. 
Yeah, there's all sorts of busy stuff here on Earth, too. So it's, it, what's really cool about this is that we can, especially even now with satellites here, we're, we can go exploring. I mean, people just found more pyramids out in Egypt by using Google Earth. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. anybody can explore. Heck, I take Google Earth vacations sometimes. <laughs> and how do, you feel, how, how do you feel about, but I mean, uh, th that's an advancement that I think uh, needs to be propelled further is how do you feel about, non-evasive exploration like you hear about architects that are searching for stuff but they never dig because now they can do it all with imagery and like uh, like underground computer radar type imaging and, and other type of non-evasive imaging and how do you feel about that yeah like the uh what is it the um site at not Darren Koo. Darren Koo's with that the underground. I mean, it was here on Earth in Turkey. There's a site in Turkey, Gobekli Tepe, that has all these buried megaliths that are just buried under there. A farmer found them in his field, and, and the people who ever made them um, buried them on purpose. You know, they actually backfilled all this dirt in, and when you pull it out, there's animals we've never seen depicted on them. Things that that this is actually reached. That's one site, Gobekli Tepe, is going to rewrite the history books on how old civilization was here on Earth. They're finding through the LIDAR and through the radar, like you said, it's not only one ring of these amazing, you know, these pillars that look like crosses type pillars. There's another like eight or nine rings in a whole couple mile radius. So there, it's it's amazing what the technology is. So they could go in and it, it, they said it would take hundreds of years to get all the dirt out. So whoever was here on Earth, and I think this ties into Mars too. I think we, I think we're missing a major piece of our history, like the Atlantis type peaks or the Lemuria that tied in with Mars, that tied into places like Venus, even comets, the, it's like uh, the 67P. We're doing a show coming up on uh, Richard's show, Other Side of Midnight, soon about that, about the structures on it. Um, the moon. So some sort of galactic catastrophe happened? Is I mean, is that... Uh, I think that's prob that was probably what did happen. Something came through and took out the, uh, you know, it's it's in a lot of the books here. Even if you break down the religion, you know, the flood, the giants, and you know, mm -hmm. in, in Christianity, each uh, you, you know, each religion has their own version of that. Oh, um, some sort of cataclysmic Big Bang sort of theory. Yeah, that wiped out a, a very civilized race. Maybe people that realized crystals or something that that there was a lot more um, technology involved than we even know. And it might not be technology like we think, like computers, but maybe just how to lift things, how to easily move type, simple technologies. Um, but talking to people and, and something had happened between these two. Like even, let's see, with the ancient Vamanas of, uh, uh, somebody's going to kill from, I think it was the Buddhist texts and things like that. I, I might be wrong on that. Uh, I've gotten so much into the space stuff lately. I'm forgetting my my own planet, but there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Will, you can't forget Earth. The... <laughs> Will is the most down to earth space explorer that we know of. That's why we're so excited to have him on the show, and we don't have him on the show for much longer. Amory, he's got places to go and people to see. So if you have any more uh, questions or cool stuff that you wanted to get to today with Will on the show. Go for it. Beaut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I do that. Are we going to talk, uh, like, I know we don't have time in this show, but, um, like, I always wondered about, like, what Buzz Aldrin said about the monolith on Phobos, like the moon, and he said it's like a potato, and that there's like a monolith there, and when people find out about it, they're going to know, they want, they'll want to know who put it there. And, and it's what's like, Phobos? Phobos is a, is a basically a little potato shaped uh, moon. It's in a very irregular orbit around Mars, and it goes around I think eight times um, a day. So it's flying around Mars. It's it's very fast, and on it, like I said, Buzz Aldrin said that he he basically said that. What are the people are going to find out when they find there's a monolith there? If you look at the pictures, one, I've got a video on it. It's a straight up 
what looks like a pillar, a huge pillar with a, a top that's got a, uh, you know, kind of a, almost like a, the Washington Monument if you cut it in half, but huge. Um, and he said, who put it there? He said the universe put it there. God put it there. And when, when he said that, I think he's referring to the unit, whatever the universal order was at the time that we were made. I mean, the, it's too perfect here on Earth. Uh, this may have been the rescue ship for the people, whatever, you know, send the people here. Look how perfect the moon is, is on a on a solar eclipse, how the eclipses work here on Earth. It's too perfect just to be too random. You know, so when I see, I hear people say, oh, it's random, it's, it's all just a coincidence. I can't buy that, especially when I go out and find this stuff on Mars, and it looks familiar. It strikes a chord with me. Um, but I still got a little bit longer. Any other questions? I mean, let's, let's uh, get them all in while we're here. Like I said, I, I love sharing the information, and I'll sit here and talk and talk and talk. So cut me off and <laughs> if you got any other questions. <laughs> Oh, I'm just so happy that you're on the show, and um, I know we're excited. And I know on your last video on what's up in the sky, you said at the end of it, you you're gonna do like a future video on like 67P, and I'm looking forward to that. And I know you were talking about some of the um, rocks on Mars look like uh, Puma Punko. I think that's what you said, right? Is that what it yeah. looks like? Yeah, the last video and, I just um, did. And. Yeah, everyone should check that video out. It was really uh, can cool. Can you guys you define that? Like, can you guys explain that a little bit more? Because it just sounded like you were speaking a foreign language. I didn't catch all that. <laughs> Puka Puka is, is really is really neat place. Actually, you've got it right there on your screen. If you could click right under Mars, that Mars ruins versus Earth. Puka Puka. Okay. It's Puka Puka is in Bolivia, and it has some of the most interesting ruins. That you that I've ever seen. Uh, go ahead and scroll on down a little bit. Okay, so and we're going to compare sort of Earth ruins to Mar Mars ruins yeah, here. Exactly. There's a okay. gigapin. Keep on going down. There we so, go. Okay. Okay. Oh, so oh, enhanced images of from Mars and then there's Puma Earth, Punka, Bolivia. So even if you can see on the. Mm. Keep, go, keep going down a little bit. I think I even made one where there's two in it. Yeah, right here. Okay, where there's that red line. Look out. See, this is oh, when it got shipped. Whoa. After something gets, you know, destroyed, something chips it. This is the type of stuff that happens when rocks nail other rocks. You can see that in the layout, you know. And, who, and I believe on Mars we're looking at a lot more buried stuff because it had water and silt running over top of it when the oceans brought that big tsunami in all across the southern half of Mars. Um, you know, if you look at the north, it's just one big flat area. Because when you say that's, but when you say a tsunami on Mars, are you talking water or sand? Water. We're talking water. At one point, Mars had about as much water as here on Earth. Um, you can tell the top of it is all flat from the water. So you can see when it, whatever hit it, whatever, whatever took out Mars created such a tsunami of water and junk that it, it pretty much wiped out all this, you know, which put it under the – you know, under silt. See how these Whoa. are all buried? The There are sandstorms there, but a so, lot of this stuff is done by water. So what happened to the water? It's underground? Uh, and now it's sort of seeping out? Yep, and at the poles. You've got a lot of the poles. They're, uh, they've thought about how to terraform it. God forbid they're, they geoengineer our own planet, screwing it up. God forbid they start going other places and dropping nuclear bombs and stuff like that <laughs> into the poles to try and warm up stuff or trying to, you know. I, we're not at that technology yet. I think some of the people that had, I do believe there was ancient race um, or ancient races, different eras of time i feel like we're stuck in this karmatic cycle mm -hmm. here on earth and we keep doing it over and over and over again until we learn the lesson and mars might be the lesson this is what we might this is what might be left of us at one time you know? emory you keep nodding in the affirmative uh go ahead emory go off mute there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> I agree. I think that there's, I believe in like ancient aliens, like on Mars, that there was once a civilization. And like Will said before, it looks like these were like foundations, uh, like maybe of a house or, you know, a building or something, you know, that, and it does look like this place here on Earth. And we're trying to figure out where we came from. And like Will said, maybe our civilization came from Mars. It seems like, like our sister planet, kind of, you know, and, and thank you so much for coming on the show, Will. This is so exciting, you know, for me and for us. Like, thank you so much. Oh, anytime. But, and everybody should it's check been... out. <laughs> and we've been trying to get on for a while, but anytime, if, when do you guys do your show every Sunday now? Yeah, we switch yeah. from Saturdays to Sundays. And uh, ideally, it brings more, uh, you know, Mars Anomaly type uh, fans to our page having you on the show, on the show today, Will. Well, and, what, I'll uh, do, what I'll do really is really appreciate uh, it. How 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 are we doing on time there, pal? We're we're still we can talk for a couple more minutes here. Uh, Great. I uh, what I what I'll do is I'll I'll download this and I'll upload it to my channel as well and link you guys out. Hopefully, get you some more subscribers on YouTube and all that good stuff. It's uh, we've learned when we network with with other people. People. That's the that's the way to go. I'll send this out through my UFA page because you guys cover a lot of the off stuff that we don't see on the media. That's what most of the people interested in this type of stuff end up interested in. Really, what's going on? They can see through the bullshit facade of you know government. And well, thanks, Will. I mean, that's a that's a nice compliment of you there. Um, and but we do talk a lot of politics and stuff on the show. If I could ask a question uh, just about sort of tying in politics and um, the, the Mars research and stuff, where do you think that NASA is going uh, in the future? Do you think that private enterprise has an advantage or a disadvantage? I mean, their satellites are exploding on the tarmac. Um, do, do you think that SpaceX or uh, what's his, uh, Mr. Uh, Musk. Musk, yeah. I think that's going to be the way to go. Where I think that we've been left behind. There's most likely technology that our military holds that is way beyond our means. So that if they're not going to share that technology, it's going to have to be done um, at, a, at a level where people like Elon Musk. There's certain technologies. There's the M drive propulsion that's coming out that they're doing a science paper on now. We're going to find out. There's a man named Dave Disler. There's just the figure this stuff out how to get to these places without using the fuel the fossil fuel needed to get there you need to fuel yeah you need the fuel to get it up into the uh, atmosphere but from there however it works it can create energy out of nowhere so now, that's how is, is uh the mars rover coming back or is it just it's gonna yeah. just end there on mars is it over already or is it still taking pictures She's still there. Amazingly, there three in the last fifteen years, we sent three. Um, Spirit made it about a year into its mission, and it got stuck, um, and it's just sitting there stuck. Now, oh, opportunity. Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> How come Matt Damon didn't find Spirit, or maybe he did? I don't, okay, and then who else is up there? The satellites Opp or the uh, robots? Got Oppy, which is Opportunity Rover, that's been roaming around for over 10 years, way past its lifespan. Oh. Ah. <laughs> what, what's that rover's name? Opportunity? Yep, Opportunity. And then nice. we have Curiosity, which is still rocking and rolling. The wheels look horrible on it. They designed some pretty crappy wheels. They're, they're made out of some sort of composite. Instead of using like a... a a rubber or that type like we've used on the prior rovers, which were a lot smaller. The prior rovers were a lot smaller. This was very ambitious what we did. But we've got a 2021 coming up that's going to be a rover. It's going to have everything Curiosity does plus more. So the odds of getting it there, like I said, usually there's like a one out of every three times we try and send something to Mars. It doesn't make it. Oh, um, so there's other rovers that never, never uh, touch down. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, they spent the Europeans have spent money on it and missed it. Uh, that one was so wonderful about India hitting it the first shot. They got their satellite into orbit on their first attempt, and they're going to be a major player in the space race. So you look uh, out. For, is India on Mars yet, or no? They're not. They don't have a rover there, but they're oh. they actually have a 
they have satellite taking pictures of it. Beautiful pictures. But excuse too. me, excuse me, excuse me. Who does have a, a satellite? A, who does have a rover there on Mars? It's the USA, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we USA. paid for it. USA. <laughs> we definitely paid for what, what it. About, what about Russia's ambitions uh, or China's when it comes to Mars? Uh, China, have, have, have we seen any progress from, from those two countries? China has been focused on the moon lately a lot. And I, I grant mm -hmm. it because the moon they has just a, as they many. Have a, they want to have a commercial broadcast from the moon. I heard that's one of their plans. <laughs> It doesn't surprise me. They've got the technology. They've they have a rover on the moon. They just put out there. It only lasted a little while, but it got some amazing pictures. Jade Rabbit was the name wow. of it. The whole the whole mission up there. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of people competing to get to space. But the real what well, I want private enterprise to make it because that we're going to have to rely to use the launch pads and facilities from NASA wallops the uh, down at the Cape in Florida uh, where they usually shoot rockets from but and the space shuttle like Cape Canaveral and Cape yeah. Cotton yeah uh, yeah Cape Canaveral and then there's another spot here about 30 minutes from we call wallops Island in Virginia where we'll see mm -hmm. they, they have a lot of public launches but they have a lot of private launches. There's a lot of stuff going into space right now because I'll see them shoot stuff off all the time that's not publicly listed. So we've got an awful lot of stuff going up. Uh, where it's going, I'm not sure. That could be for another show because people swear there's a, we're already on Mars and there's a base there. I haven't bought into the theory, but uh, a lot of people have. And I'm not going to say that – I'm one of those people that leaves my mind open. I can never close it fully because, God, if you do, you would never learn anything here. Um, but I think it's us. I think it's going to be the people that are going to show the actual libraries, hopefully find out. I, I don't think it's going to be NASA that puts us on Mars. I think we're going to have to send our own images. We're going to have to set up our own satellites. Um, that's going to be the way of the future where we do it worldwide, but not like a new world order type deal where it's where we get money through the whole world, crowdfunding. And then, but most of all, not just the money, the smarts, the, the, the ingenuity, the people who understand rocketry, who understand separate new propulsion systems, they can put this stuff together. Um, I think that's going to be us. That's not going to be the government. The government doesn't like to share, <laughs> you know? Right. And I mean, just imagine if one of these private companies like got some kind of footage or some kind of information that just, I mean, would the government pay them to get that information? They're like, we got this amazing information, but if you want it, it's going to cost you X number of dollars. Yeah. I think the government knows what's on basically bars are, are, very close the mood they understand what sits on the mood that there's plenty of structures and that they're used to used to be like i said this whole show could have been on the mood as well i'm doing a uh, six o'clock show with ufa that focuses on the mood with it we're going to have uh ken johnson on there he's uh worked with imagery through nasa forever and had seen photos people you know back when you smudged pictures not photoshop back on the old things you had to actually you know, erase them out or smudge them out. Try, so, yeah, try to clean them up manually kind of thing, like a film. Yeah, and I understand why NASA has to do it. First off, they're bound by the Brookings Report. We live with a bunch of people who say they, they could take, you know, extraterrestrial life. But just from the trolls that hit the, you know, the – the religious side, the, there's a whole lot of it that would really probably break down society if they really knew the truth. That's why I think they don't tell us the truth about a lot of it. Um, mm -hmm. Even to this day, as conditioned we are, and we have been conditioned for, and with movies, with Hollywood, to eventually accept uh, extraterrestrial life. And I think Mars right. is going to be the, the first step, that there was life there. And then it wouldn't be such a... Uh, uh, a jump if there was life on Mars to, hey, there's these people here, whether they're interdimensional, whether they're, you know, from another galaxy or whether they live on the backside of the moon, somewhere on Venus, who knows, you know? So have we tried, have we tried with these rovers to plant life on Mars in any way? 
And no, also, but that is a hell of an idea, man. No, we haven't, but that is a great idea. We, we should, need some Matt Damon, some poop, and some potatoes, and we're ready to go. Yeah. How did, you feel, how did you feel about the movie The Martian? Because I feel that if if I were to ask anyone about their feelings about that Matt Damon movie, if you've seen it, it would be you. Will Ferrer, how did you feel about the movie The Martian starring Matt Damon? I loved it. I loved the whole concept of it. And that uh, it had a little bit of everything in it. <laughs> it, it really did. And, and he, how did you feel about, like, the way that Mars itself was depicted visually? I mean, did it – correspond to like photos in your opinion it, they 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 depicted exactly how nasa depicts it with that butterscotch color i call it butterscotch puke because <laughs> that's what it looks mm-hmm. like it looks like yeah. it's uh it looks like what you've my been eating butterscotch on. candies all day and then you're like oh my yeah. god i'm going to mars <laughs> <laughs> yeah right or what my cats throw up that's what yeah it like. you know got a, so, got a little bit of hair in there yeah but they that's that's exactly how they you know, that that's how Hollywood works. You know, they got to stay within the the paradigm. What was well, what about what about the whole slingshot and the the rocket back and stuff? I mean, did did do you find it realistic enough or a little bit a little bit off the chart there? You know, I the whole I've got friends who understand this. They went to school and like understand physics and this especially the physics of the solar system and how how to use gravity from various planets to to slingshot and like you said uh just new horizons itself had to use various planets to get out to pluto the mission that came to pluto recently um when i was down at space science week in dc i went down there to, to cover it as press they let me in beautiful building i got to meet all sorts of people Sweet. from the space i met uh the program directors uh chris russell he runs the he ran the dawn mission and, um, and they welcomed you they didn't shun you as the crazy no. internet conspiracy guy you know what's funny the one guy i really wanted to meet was the guy who ran the uh who ran the new horizons mission and we were walking out of, out of the john out of all places at lunchtime and uh I looked at him and said, "Oh wow, you know, um, I've been, I've been a fan of your missions for such a long time. Yeah, you pull up your New Horizons mission. Um, this was some of the best photographs." And then he went on to give his, uh, I can't remember his name right now. I'm telling you, I've been drawing. <laughs> I was sick all week, so I, I'm still drawing some blanks. Type in mission director. I hope I can't remember his name right now. Let's see. But anyway, we came out of the we came out of the restroom. I got a picture of us together somewhere. He, uh, I introduced myself. I said, "My name is Will. I run a website." He said, "Oh, I know who you are." So they were watching. His zipper was down. You guys just came. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we were we were already outside of it. So it's uh, let me. I'll tell you in two seconds who what his name is. It's uh, oh, Doctor oh. Stern. It's Doctor Alan Stern. I can't believe it. Okay, oh, Doctor Alan Stern. Yeah, so I ran into him. Up there, wake up, brain. And he said, oh, I know who you are, you know. So obviously he, they watch the – NASA is very press-oriented. He, he knew was, you. He, he knew, knew you. Yeah, he actually knew I was. He knew my website. He knew what I'd done. And funny, his was one of the missions that I never really went after and attacked, <laughs> you know, or, or, or you know, complained oh, right, right. because they gave us the pictures. You know, they gave us amazing pictures from. I know, but what an honor! What an honor, dude! Congratulations! Yeah. I mean, that was that must have been a big honor. It was interesting to say the least. Definitely was. But I also got to see all these scientists from around the world come and talk about their their plans, what their give current updates on their missions. It was a very good experience, at least for somebody like me who's trying to learn more of the science of it all. Uh, but you're dealing with very compartmentalized people just like you have in the military. Um, every program is compartmentalized. So I could see somebody on Curiosity, like I, if you go, I've got 600 videos, I think, or 660 videos on that thing. Um, you could do that, NASA hides this or hides that. 
and type that in with what's up in sky 37 and you'll right. find and just just go to your website uh that that i've been on pr pretty much all morning here i mean uh there's just there's just a ton of links and it's all different kind of stuff i mean like you might start down the rabbit hole of mars then go to the moon then look up uh pluto links series <laughs> it's you ufos earth earth i mean Baltic Anomaly Update by Peter Lindbergh. Complete son uh, sonar scan of the Baltic Sea Anomaly finally released. Awesome. The top stuff yeah. at Mars. Uh, we already looked at it. The Mars Ruins vs. Earth Pampa Punco Bolivia Ruins. Mars Building Debris Everywhere and New Curiosity Rover Images. The Curiosity Rover Safe Mode Saga. Strongest military ever found on Mars? Oh, mili I said military, but strongest material <laughs> ever. It could have they have strong. the strongest military? Oh, we're screwed now. No, the yeah. strongest material. The strongest material ever found on Mars, question mark. Well, we, what we is this all up, about? We sent up a, we sent the rover up. Nobody's going to mess with our rover. It's got a laser on it. It's shot that laser, I think, over 10,000 times since it's got there. So, about, if there Wait, is whoa, 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 whoa. The <laughs> laser is just an imaging thing isn't it it's not a actual star wars laser is it oh it it, it puts holes in things yeah you don't want to have your hand in front of it it'll put it oh. uh, it's oh. definitely it it can dig into like would they it's pretty neat actually because a lot of people mistake it for anomalies um, they'll shoot it about 90 times to find out what wavelength the material's on and you get like five or six holes that look perfectly done. And I've had to explain that to so many people that, oh, no, that's just laser shots. But uh, hopefully there aren't little Martians running around because they're probably scared to shitless of our rover running around this big thing, shooting the laser and stuff. Pew. Pew. Yeah. Pew, pew. Um, we need more lasers. Pew, pew. What, but every, what's the strongest material maybe on Mars, and what is this weird-looking thing? That right there, that just – look how thin it gets in the middle. I mean, I've been trying to think about here on Earth, and at the end, it even has something on top of it. Like, looks that's like a gets, turtle. Yeah, it gets his neck really far. Yeah, it it looks really thin in the middle. So whatever's holding that up, I mean, it's got to be pretty strong. That, and, and then it, so you've you know if you've then but it's is it a strong. metal maybe I mean I think maybe so just... Pro probably an alloy or something. And at the end, see a lot of this stuff. You gotta remember, it's up there for you know maybe twenty to two hundred thousand years. There was it does everything oxidized. There was a lot more water on there at one time. I think that's a lot of the reasons why you do get some of that color that they give. They overdo the color because they don't want you to see everything behind it. Uh, but that right I, there, I don't think I. I mean, I know we're getting close to the end because you got places to go, people to see. But I don't think I was satisfied with. If there was a giant, massive tidal wave on Mars, where did the water go? I don't think you satisfied that. They say it went out to the atmosphere. They say what happened was this is the NASA's version, and then it got hit by a planet, which possibly would have been the planet that makes up our asteroid belt now because the fragments of it are strewn uh -huh. about everywhere. So as it hit it, mm -hmm. it sent the water and you can see where the ocean was. It sent it out into space. Basically, it said most some of it went over the land on the bottom part, and some of it went out into space. Now, whether that's the truth or not, God knows. You know, scientists come up with these ideas, they teach us it in school, and then they like rubber stamp it like we could never have another opinion. It made more sense. It made more sense just now the way you explained it than the way I was thinking before. So I think that's pretty good. Anne Marie, what do you have? Uh, anything else that you know? If if tomorrow you're like, damn it, I should have asked Will about this. Is there anything like that with you, Anne? Go ahead. Let's see. Oh, I don't know if we have time, but Will, you wanted me to remind you uh, about the security story. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was coming out. I, I've got season tickets to the Redskins. This goes back to politics and the, and the horrible, horrible. <laughs> I was leaving the stadium with my cousin with souvenir cups, and I had a Pepsi. I don't, I don't drink, so I had, you know, a Pepsi. And as I'm leaving the stadium with my souvenir cup, I get stopped by one of the workers there. He said, "You can't leave with that." 
I was like, what? Like, I looked at her and I said, excuse me? I said, it's a souvenir cup. She goes, well, I don't know what's in it. I was like, first off, they don't sell liquor in the this, in this souvenir cup. And then the supervisor came over, and, and I was so glad that he did this. He, he said, do you know what's in that cup? To the girl. She goes, no. It's like, I mean, it's got to the point where they're searching. He, he finally let me go with my cup. But they're searching you on the way out of the damn building. I mean, with a souvenir cup. I think the whole time getting into it, they, because it was September 11th, they, the day after, they always pump up the security. They, you know, they're funnel us through lines there. It, it's become so personally invasive. And I just watched it. Yeah, the, the, the definition of a souvenir, the definition, <laughs> I believe, of a souvenir is something that you are going to take with you when you go uh, to remember the event. Yeah. And souvenir. I, I had to do That's everything why possible. I call it a souvenir because it's like, hey, I, I was here today. I got this. I got my souvenir. And my now, now I'm going. Yeah, I paid my fifteen dollar <laughs> pennant. Where where'd you get that pennant? Uh, the, the gift store. Like, right. uh, you might be getting high off that pennant or drinking. Like I said, they don't sell. The, it's the Redskins cups is like this. It's huge. It's like they don't put liquor in it. So unless I would have stuck my own liquor in it and did it, you know what I mean? At this point, it was just ass backwards. I was like, I can't believe you're like dirty grandpa putting a, putting a whole flask yeah right in a souvenir cup. You know, my grandpa used to always have one in his jacket. <laughs> he had a little something in there. He had little bottles. Those little cute little bottles you'd open up and just put a rest in and then you know, chase it with a bit. <laughs> well, but, you, but you're saying it was on 9-11 weekend, but you, you made it out of there, and you made it out of there with your souvenir cup thanks to the uh, – Thanks to the boss. And he yelled at the girl. I was like, look, they don't even train these people. It's like security doesn't get trained. And I started thinking about like how the TSA and stuff, none of these people get trained. You know, it's like they're – and when they do, they get trained to be total – Jerks, you know, total jerks. He actually lit into that into that worker. I was so happy because I was like, you know, I was really just like, I was ready to just pour out the liquid. I was like, I'm not, I want my cup. You know, it was a $15 cup. I got it soda in there. So I guess now I don't get soda till I stop and spend another, you know, dollar up the street. I just paid 15 bucks for this soda. But it, it just really reminded me just like the whole process of getting into these stadiums now. The post 9 11 is just well, the world. Well, if you could do me a big favor, I'm going to let Anne Marie go for a minute. Can, do you do you have the cup there? Can you show it to us? Yeah, let me get it. Okay, yeah. great. Anne Marie, uh, so that that was the security story. Uh, he's getting hassled on his way out of the uh, event with a souvenir cup. I mean, do you think it was because it was 9/11 weekend? Do you think the that one maybe security person was just not trained properly, or well, what are your feelings about Will's story? And go ahead. Right. Well, that's what we were talking about, the libertarian view on, you know, your rights. It's like, don't impede on my rights. Don't deny me. I mean, he's leaving the stadium. They're denying, oh, that looks like a Pepsi. Like, that looks like a souvenir cup that you'd have Pepsi in. Yeah, it looks like I'm be a smug. <laughs> it, it only says Coca-Cola on the side. Yeah, right. like I'd be smuggling out something with it. You know, I guess they thought I, it was just – just put the topping on the ice. It's like, yeah, were were you stumbling and acting belligerent? Were you yelling at people and flipping people off, Will? I mean, was there other <laughs> reason for us to be suspicious? Nope. I was like, all right, you guys have a wonderful – I'll see you next week. You guys have a wonderful <laughs> – yeah. I, I, said, I, don't, I let everybody else drink there and act a fool. That's not the place – <laughs> I, I can't drink two beers without falling on my face. So I, don't, I drive down there, so I'm like – the whole time I'm I'm clear headed. I'm wondering if I'm more clear headed than the lady trying to take my cup away from me on the way out. You know, but it just goes to show this world we're living here. And I don't think it's just done yet. There you go. <laughs> That's just post nine eleven. Or just because it was September eleventh. Either way, um, the security is ramped up like that at every single. Yeah. Event. Well, it's that time of year again. It's it's security day. It's uh, enhanced security day. It's also a beautiful day, 9-11, because the laws of physics don't apply, including the Hillary <laughs> right? Clinton's I mean, legs. <laughs> buildings just fall out you know, from nothing in the middle, collapse into their footprints, and it's a, uh, a wonderful 
time and that's mm-hmm. something i haven't really gotten much into more i had to get kind of give up on it when i started doing the bar stuff because it's yeah. it's almost like either somebody has has realized it or not there's not at this point the kids are too young they weren't part of it they're not going to realize it and there's nothing that they could do i would love to see the bush or cheney go to one of these countries they're wanted in and go to the hague you know and have to stand trial for for the wars that came from it and uh the well we've gone over this plenty of times you and i have had these conversations about you know the so what is it century for a new america all those but, people yeah, yeah the the plan for a new american century the pnac but we, yeah. we need a we need yeah. a new uh pearl harbor as yeah. a catalyzing so, event so so we can't let people leave with cups you know you know because exactly. they might they, they might, you know, drink and drive or something with a cup. It's just ridiculous. The whole time I'm yeah. there, they're they're selling you six, seven dollar beers, but I can't leave with a cup. You know, it's sad. But that was my security story. I'm sure you were racially racially profiled. Yeah, I could have been. Who knows? Another hillbilly <laughs> white guy with a souvenir cup. Get him. Yeah. He must be drunk, you know. Yeah. And even even my cousin, like, he was in the military. He joined right after 9-11. He kind of got suckered into going. He got caught up in all the, you know, the hooray, hurrah. And he's out of there now. He got out as fast as he could. When he got over there, he realized exactly what was going on. And uh, I turned him on to some of the videos when I got back. Uh, kind of like you probably some of the ones that we've seen they, they brought us to it and he mm-hmm. sold on he sold on it all and get, going over and getting to see exactly it all really you know really does help because how come we're how come we're here in afghanistan and we're making them grow the poppy again how come we have more heroin overdoses since we've been in there than ever you know it's it's the the, the war is all about everybody thought it was about oil I never thought it was about oil. I thought it was about opium, drugs. Yeah, opium, drugs in Afghanistan and that pipeline. You know, they wanted mm-hmm. to build that pipeline. And people who don't want to use the Federal Reserve, people don't want to use the uh, international banks. Anybody who wanted to set their own up got put on that list. Um, but mm-hmm. that's as far away from Mars as possible. Do you think that? Do you think that America? <laughs> do you think that America, especially in this? Uh, 2016 election where there's a lot of talk about uh, Putin potentially um, hacking the election or the Democrats want to blame the, the Russians for everything. Someone like Donald Trump says he thinks he can get along with Putin. Hillary says, you know, never Putin. Like, he's just a terrible guy. Um, how, how do you feel that uh, American and Russian relations should advance in the future and also, since we're talking to you, Will, how do you think that would affect a space race going forward, Russia and American relations, Will? It needs to be done. We need to take. We need to take. Well, first off, I'm I'm a fan of Vladimir Putin. I'm, I'm a fan. I've we hosted a, a Russian girl here at my house for a year, not a year, but about six months last year. Like a she, foreign exchange student, yeah, you hosted? Okay. exactly. Okay. So he, she came down here and worked. Was and she hot? She, yeah, she was. <laughs> yeah, she was definitely cute. But she was a lot younger than I am. And, and right, I'm right. Very naive to the world. Um, and But she learned a lot while she was here. And she could she's working in Moscow now. She's in her 20s. You know, it's, it's a very – the country, from what I can tell, they have decent morals. That that's one thing that that has happened to our country. There's no more moral. We've been demoralized here, um, and that kind of a, like you can bring people to information, show them something, show them a FEMA camp, show them uh, this, and they they still won't believe it. You know, you can take them to it. Um, but yeah, she. Uh, I, I think that we really do need to to make sure we work with people like uh, Russia. We need to work with China. We need, it. and I think behind the scenes we really are. A lot of the hoorah, hoorah is just political theater. Um, I and think specific, we, specifically on the space race, though, right? I mean, the yeah. International Space Station that seems to be going pretty good. Yeah, I, I mean that. Right now, the only way we can get there is through Russian, <laughs> is through their technology. We've got to hitch a ride with them. 
you know, because of our space shuttle fleet is out. It's pretty pretty sad where we've gone as a uh, as a country because I think they don't spend the money in NASA. There, we're we're working a lot more on unmanned probes now, satellites to just kind of I guess do the reconnaissance before we start sending people out. Learn, you know, which is smart, but. If everybody worked together at this stuff, I think we'd be a lot better off. And uh, I'm thinking that Putin would I, – I, I don't really care who wins the election at this point because I don't think that they run our country anyway. I think they're just puppet heads. But it sure would be funny to – at least it would be entertaining if, if, <laughs> if Donald Trump won. You know? <laughs> That's not an endorsement, but it might be entertaining. Uh, Will, just, I mean, I, I clicked back over here to be on screen share, and everyone is looking at this dripping water, right? And even this water drip that looks like an animal doing a dance or something, it's kind of funny over here. <laughs> but what about this piece of rock that's long and thin, and you can see by its shadow how far it jets out, and it maintains, you know, sort of its balance and strength. And it, it kind of relates to that other picture that we looked at, you know, the strongest uh, element yeah. or element. I mean, how do these thin pieces jet out like that and remain that way for, for however many souls? You know what I mean? Yeah, it, and it doesn't move. It, it's amazing how much. And if you were the other picture you read under there, it, uh, you could see under it has the exact same layers. Like if you, yeah, if you go back to the one you were just at. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. If you go right below it, you can see that there's more layers to that, almost like it's a, uh, you know, squared off layers, just like the top, yeah, down there. Um, it, there's so much there. Now, they've got to be careful. With, with NASA, where they are now, they can't turn the camera without finding an anomaly. We've gotten up above the water line where the silt and the everything was basically kind of tossed under things now things are out it's of like the only what only water can make these lines which makes me buy into this tsunami theory even more and it may, it also makes me feel like yeah there was something there that was messed up by this possible flooding and 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 a asteroid or something collision makes the perfect sense but then like i'm like how did it tsunami the water sort of retreated to the axis points maybe or i think it probably what would what would happen if, if an asteroid hit happened. earth if, if an asteroid a massive big big bang kill all the dinosaurs asteroid hit earth and mars possibly at the same time like a planet in our solar system exploded or something crazy cataclysmic definitely i mean it reshapes the whole terraforming of the planet is that right yeah and that's where that's where you you see this type of wreckage. I mean, imagine what our capital. What imagine what our cities would look like. Well, look at Hiroshima and stuff after we dropped the bomb. A lot of times I look at those pictures versus some of these uh, some of these ruins we find, and some of it is so very similar, twisted up metal. And like those four, those eight pictures on there for you guys got. If you're watching this, check the website out if you're really interested in this because it's just a slew of information. I've got good people there that are always putting stuff out. The uh, Like our forums are always rocking and rolling. People put out space news every day. Um, and I listen, I don't pay these people. They just – when I'm not around, they've kind of helped me. Uh, yeah, help me yeah. Emery, did you get did, did you get Will's check to uh, totally be his biggest fan and, and supporter yeah. today? Did you, did you receive the check in the mail, Emery? Go ahead. Oh, no. Um, and yeah, and on Facebook, there's a great group over there, and they, they constantly – you can get notified on your Facebook page that there's a new picture that someone puts up from the group, the Facebook group. It's a great – it's great even on Facebook if you're on Facebook. Uh, the What's Up in the Sky dot com group or the What's Up in the Sky group on Facebook. Is that right? Where, where can people find you on Facebook? I mean, on the Internet, Will. A lot of people are going to be really intrigued by the show and want to know where to find out more from you. you can Obviously, what's up in the sky .com, but where else? 
uh, YouTube, What's Up in the Sky 37. Out of, if you just type in What's Up in the Sky on uh, the Facebook feed, you'll find a group that's a hidden, it's not hidden, but you have to request to become part of a member of it, which we usually, as long as you're not, as long as you don't have 1,000 other groups you're in, it look like you're going to spam a bunch of porn, I usually let you in. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I have also a What's Up in the Sky, um, yeah, there's my channel on basically have a Facebook posting place for what's up in the sky. I think that's even linked out on there. Like if you hit the Facebook here at the top right hand corner, there's a Twitter feed I've got. Yeah, right there. That should take you to the actual. Well, that's no, that's one of mine. I also have that old energy. I still post here too. This was when you first met me, the Energy Field Information Network. Type in uh, what's up in the sky up there. See how the group comes up. I think you're a member of it, so you'll be able to see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of the group. Yeah, so we've, uh, we're everywhere, and there's also another, like, 10 groups of us out there. So if people really start, like, Mars, Moon, Space, TV group, if people really start getting into this, it can get addicting. There are so many people that I've had email me and tell me, I can't get my, my – every time my wife hears that – What's up, YouTube? She she cringes, or she knows I'm stuck down here for hours. You know, and uh, it's easy to get stuck into the imagery because you're looking at a whole different planet. You know, it's interesting. It's amazing we could do this technology and sit here and peer into a glimpse, even if it's just a little glimpse of just a small little piece of that planet. It's uh, it's amazing and, that we uh, have that technology. And who is William H. Farrar? Is he related to you, or? Yeah, that's my other, that's my other account. That's backed out. <laughs> oh, what, what, what's the, the H stand for? Horatio. Henry. I'm William Henry Farrar the <laughs> Third. Nice, <laughs> William Henry Farrar the Third. Oh, the UFLA, the UFLA has their own website too, right? It, it's like. Yep. UFLA. Uh, that's an that's an acronym, and what what does that stand for again? United Family of Anomaly Hunters. Like if you type it up there at the top, just type U F A H. Oh, okay. Hold on. First time on, on Facebook. U F A H. <laughs> yeah. There's like, Will Ferrar. Okay. And we went, I think we got about twelve thousand people on there. The, I like the, it. We're getting off. I like it. We're getting bigger and bigger. And then go ahead, that anomalyhunters.tv is a, is a website that kind of puts all of ours together. Um, you can click on it right there if you wanted to show people that. Um, uh, United, United, uh, UFAH, United Family of Anomaly Hunters. And uh, I think I just liked it. Cool. We awesome. Said, and everyone, we everyone, should, everyone should be uh, looking at my screen share to do what I do. Because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> no, but if you want to find because, out more from Will Farrar and the uh, United Family of Anomaly Hunters, this is the place to do it. I mean, I just typed UFAH in my Facebook. It came up, and I liked it immediately. I recommend everyone do that. And uh, they can find you on YouTube. They can find you on Facebook. They can find you on your website. And congratulations for having your own .com, Will, and – Maintaining it and keeping it uh, up and exciting with lots of amazing pictures, news, and information. Because, uh, you know, when the government tries to take over the internet, all you living in your Facebook ghetto are going to get screwed, and all of us with our own dot com addresses are going to be just fine and dandy. Yes, yeah, unless, unless they start to crack down. Yeah, and I've got it all backed up so I could run it from servers out in other countries, too. There's, there's many. Mm -hmm. Many different from your things. home in Hillary Clinton. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can I can toss my server down there and and then you know glue some. I might have to glue some of my blackberries back together, but I might. <laughs> Are you in the habit of smashing your uh, old phones with a hammer? Hard drives. We smash hard drives. Yeah, yeah. smash them. But, yeah, because I'm HIPAA. Where I work is a, is a behavioral health company, and we have to deal with HIPAA laws. So when I have an older computer, it's funny. I, I take the hammer to, to the hard drives. Um, but that's smart. 
to do if you're trying to hide information. <laughs> Not hide it, but I can't allow people's names to get out or something on a drive. A lot of people don't realize copiers too. Here's a little tech lesson for people. If you've got a copier at work and you're putting information through it, those things have hard drives now. We, we bought a copier online and I uh, it came from one of the Florida police departments, took the hard drive out of it, and there's stuff all over it. Like you, can, there's arrest things, people, social security numbers. They don't realize that that stuff stays on the hard drive. So you know, the whole thing with Hillary and her email, it's amazing that they've they've basically let it go. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, well, yeah, it just came out yesterday that uh, Barack Obama actually sent her uh, emails using a pseudonym name, an, a an alias, and uh, but that contradicts statements that he made that in 2014 that said he just found out about everything through the news. How many times has Barack Obama said he just found out stuff on the news? Like he just goes to judge report, judge report in the morning like I do. And then he's like stunned like, Oh, Hillary Clinton had a private server. Oh my God. It's the first time I'm hearing about it. I didn't know when I emailed her at Hillary Clinton.com <laughs> with, with the alias uh, big black guy in the white house that, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know that was, uh, could be hacked and leaked and was on our private server. But anyways, I'm out of here in 45 days and Barack Obama. Thank you very much. Uh, Emery, did you have any thoughts and opinions on that real quick or anything else we, we wanted to get out? I feel like we're running short on time. I, I also feel like we've done an amazing freaking show here. I don't want it to, go too long because I don't want people with short attention spans to miss this one. It's been too good. Oh, yeah. And, and we're just so thankful to have you on, Will. And I just, I love Will's website and the, I think I called them the United Federation of Anomaly Hunters. I didn't realize it was family. The F, I, was I didn't realize it was the Justice League of Anomaly Hunters, <laughs> yeah. but okay. A lot of people but that's a lot really cool. that. <laughs> a lot of people have done that, put that federation in front of it. I think because it sounds more spacey. <laughs> but, yeah, like Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, but we're, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's like I said, it's been really busy this summer. This this fall, if you guys ever, when I get some good stuff, or I may come on for a couple of minutes during some of your shows and show you some of the new findings. Um, if you guys are going to be going every, every Sunday at 2 o'clock, is that your plan? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was working on a I was working on a new game for this for this week. Uh, I was hoping to have Sam here, and I kind of don't want to give away my idea because I don't want Amory to go cheat all week and study. But uh, <laughs> but it's so funny because we were just talking about acronyms because that was the game. And uh, Will Ferrar, what does NASA stand for? You say it all the time, but do you know what it stands for? Not a straight answer. <laughs> you can't tell me what NASA stands for? I would have got you. I could have got the points on this. Uh, not a, not a nautical, uh, air, air space. Come on. You got to know this one. It's some space, something. NASA, what it actually stands for? Yeah, what does the acronym stand for, NASA? I forget now. Now you put me on the spot. I think it's National No Aero Googling. Aero no Googling. Let's see what happens. Let's Google. I think it's National Aerospace Association, something like that. Let's see. NASA acronym. I'm Googling. You can't Google. I know. I, I, we call it. Not, yeah, it's not National Aeronautics and Space Administration. I was close. And Space Administration. See, I knew space and – okay. Do you know like what you know yeah, that, that was, I was saving NASA for, for the hard categories. I mean, you know what FBI stands for, right, Well. Yeah, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Amory, CIA. A Center of Intelligence Agency or something? Cent Central Intelligence. <laughs> oh, Central. Okay. <laughs> Man, see, I knew that would be a good game. Yeah. Oh, there's so many ABC. Like, you know, we. Yeah, yeah. It's all about those, those ABCs. What does CBS stand for? <laughs> no. Clinton Broadcasting System. Clinton Broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> ABC stands for All About Country. No, all right. <clears throat> all right. All right, guys. Well, it's been fun. Well, it's been fun. It's been a good time. I know you got things to go do, and I hope your day goes well and you, you start feeling a little bit better from your uh, cold that you had this week, right? Yeah, yeah feel better. better. 
if that's what's now keep like, in mind keep in mind we went almost 90 minutes we we have gone 90 yeah. minutes i believe we didn't hear we didn't hear will have a coughing fit he didn't faint or anything like that so i i think hillary's gonna i think hillary will make it through 90 minutes tomorrow night will don't you i mean you were coughing before the show you pulled your shit together you did a great show She'll make you through it. It'll be an interesting debate. It'll. Uh, I don't think it's going to have much. Everybody always says it has impact on the elections. I think people have either made their mind up. But I'm one of those people, as long as we have electronic voting, you can't trust the voting totals ever. So as long as people can uh, vote electronically, we're never going to have true elections as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how to fix the systems or I don't know how to make it happen, but it just seems like uh, if you've watched that movie, there's one that's out there on YouTube that shows exactly how easily the die bulb machines are hacked, how you can change the numbers of it. So uh, elections here need to be taken a lot more seriously, but we'll see what happens tomorrow night. It's going to be either a slug fest or it's going to be very boring, <laughs> you know, and uh I, hope I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a combination. I think that the the highlight, the you know, ten to twenty second highlight reel will be exciting. Uh, the ninety minute event is going to be, you know, going to drag on a little bit. But um, yeah. I think overall, <laughs> people are you know going to be intensely watching both candidates. Uh, they're both going to try to get off their zingers. It's going to be like every other one, but you know, just more audience maybe. I don't know. I mean. <laughs> But when I start thinking that nothing bad's going to happen, I start thinking, do you like, I think that means something really bad and historic is going to happen. So I'm still a little bit torn. I'm going to be on the lookout for anything weird coming from either candidate. I suspect it might be yeah. Hillary and her, her health. But um, tonight, Hillary, what do you think? Uh, Will, did you say that tonight you're going to be doing a, a live show with UFA? Is that starting at 6 o'clock Eastern? Uh, yeah, it's they, we don't can them live. We basically just record them, and then Mike, uh, okay. Mikey puts them out, or Thomas uh, Jensen. He always he's Mike, his middle name, I guess, is Mikey. He always has Mikey Jensen on his stuff. He actually will put it together and then put it out next week or so. Doing live shows is pretty hard sometimes when you get so many people together. So it's impressive that you guys have figured it out. Got Google Hangouts to actually work because I tried to get this dang thing to work ten or fifteen oh, times. Oh come on, Will! Well, we got a good guest like you. It's going to work great, right? <laughs> and, I, and I'm an IT guy, and I can barely get it to work. So <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate being on, man. It's at www.whatsupinthesky.com. Come check it out. You can spend days there if you're into this stuff. And if you're not into it, you might realize how fast you get sucked into it because it's interesting stuff out there. Um, and it's like I said, I gave a very small taste of what, what really is, is sitting out there. And I think you'd be uh, happy if you checked the websites out. So I think you'll be happy too. And all our fans and friends uh, and everyone that is miscellaneously just stumbling across this video and watching it, please make sure to do just that. Check out Will's site. What's up in the sky? He already told you where you can find him on Facebook and the family of the Anomaly Hunters and the D Lake and the Amory and the Media Speaks and the Sam I Beat Again GD and check out the correct views. And uh, I don't know what else to say except for pour juice on your chin. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> Anytime. As I always say at the end of my much love to you guys. Have a good one. And uh, we'll say, next time I get some good good stuff i'll let you know ahead of time it could come on for 10 minutes and, and give it to you guys show you be a little space awesome. advisor for you so great